This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. And it is. We're talking with Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent and chief of the Counterintelligence Behavioral Analysis Program. Talking John Forsythe, Dr. John Forsythe, a doctor who was found dead in a lake in northwest Arkansas after going missing. This, I'm telling you, this is such a strange case. This is someone who, on the surface, things looked like they were in a good place. He had settled his divorce, had a pretty hefty uh, alimony and child support payment of $19,000, was not contesting it. Uh, He did have eight children with his previous wife, so that kind of makes it more understandable why you'd have such a hefty payment there. Uh, had a, made millions of dollars in crypto, allegedly. Um, but then uh, things were getting a little more stressful in life, but not such in a bad way. He had a baby on the way. Uh, he had just gotten engaged. Things were looking up for the most part. And then suddenly uh, he goes missing. And, and all of that seems very bizarre how it went down. He's seen in a parking lot at an aquatic center. An SUV pulls up next to his car. He gets in for about 10, 15 minutes, gets out of the SUV, walks around his car for about 10 minutes, does not get his wallet, his keys, his phone out of his car, just simply walks away from his car and then is found uh, dead uh, in a lake several miles from where this actually took place with a bullet wound. Uh, His brother... Uh, as uh, all this was going on while he was missing, talking to the media, saying some pretty bizarre things, uh, including that uh, he had been, John had been kidnapped the year before, never reported it, came out of it safe, and that there had been a foreign uh, business dealing that had gone bad and they had received some threats from overseas, but brushed it off because nothing ever uh, came of it. Uh, What's your take on this story thus far? Secret life. Yeah, that's it. It's everyone's got it. Sometimes it's really, really tiny and small. Sometimes it's really this big. And I mean, that one thing, because I've read it right here is that uh, the son told he had made some enemies and hinted that there are people who don't like what I'm doing, but did not elaborate right there. Yeah. You're getting glimpses of secret life. And that's exactly what happened. He, whatever went on with that car is, you know, in that SUV is at the is at the point of failure for this for this poor doctor and because the behavior around it was voluntary mm-hmm. it wasn't like a stranger that engaged him and that's the last time he saw him it, it actually kind of rings to me a little bit of the of the CEO of WhatsApp was it WhatsApp that got yeah. killed out in San Francisco yeah that there's a a, a a kind of he his was less secret life, but definitely hey someone had it out for him that he's completely unaware of because he got in the car with the the guy that wound up killing him um, without any kind of pushback and thought everything was fine and next thing he knows he's got a knife in his chest. So I think I think we have secret life going on here, and as they dig into his social media, as they dig into his background a little bit more and interview people in it, I think it's going to come unraveling. What I'm wondering about is he had this business with his brother, this crypto business. And if he was targeted because of some sort of business dealing gone wrong and their partners, wouldn't the brother be, uh, shouldn't the brother be concerned right now about his own safety? If, if it is something to do with that uh, sphere, maybe I'm not convinced it's about the crypto. Um, the, the other thing that kind of struck me here, the one sentence, let's see, uh, Richard said, stories from strangers meant the most. One woman had sent him a note saying Dr. Uh, Forsyth had saved her life. He prioritized her concerns and her situation above his own and talked her through it. That's weird behavior. That's kind of strange language for, it doesn't sound like medical advice. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's kind of, what's that? I mean, that's, and that's exactly the, you know, the note I made on it. Yeah. What's that? That just, there's, I think it's a little deeper and I think there's a little bit more hidden in his life than this crypto thing. Really? So you think it goes deeper than, than the business and, and what the, the narrative has been that the brother has been talking about? Well, <clears throat> let's, again, let's think about it. If the, like you said, you did, you did a great 
you know, thought process there, if this was tied in any way to the crypto thing, wouldn't the brother's behavior change? And is if we if the brother's behavior hasn't changed, well, then for some reason he doesn't think it's tied. Well, my question about the brother's behavior is, and I'm in no way accusing him, but it's just let no stone be unturned here. Oh, I see what you're uh, saying. <laughs> is, is he, before they even found the body, he was doing podcasts. And we've reached out to him. He's never responded. Um, and, and talking about him being kidnapped the year before, about yeah, uh, having weird. having this weird narrative of, of someone being upset at them overseas with their business. I don't know. It just seemed like a very odd, ominous um, narrative being told by someone before we really know much of anything already getting out there. Oh, he's kidnapped the other year, but nobody reported it. That, that number one seems bizarre. Like, did this yep. even happen? Because supposedly nobody really knew about it, about it the, other than the brother and John Forsyth. Uh, and as well as the, the weird business dealings, as far as we know, only those two knew about it. And now it's only being talked about out loud once John's missing. So yeah. either, either this is the brother, you know, those two had a pact and it's like, let's not talk about this to anybody. And now that, uh, the brother was missing, John's missing. You're, you're just trying to be a good person and, and let everything out there and say everything, you know, in hopes of getting your brother back, that could completely be the motive, or you could be trying to tell a story. Uh, to uh, to steer a thought process in another direction if you have something to do with it. And I don't know either way by any means, but it's an interesting observation. It's very bizarre what the brother is saying, if to be true, that this actually happened to John prior. But I suppose anything could be possible here. I'm I'm with you on this watch the brother motive. <laughs> yeah. Because like you said, there you lose someone who he says he's so close to. And if it's so tied to things that were going on in his life. So it's either he was completely witting enough to know he's not a threat or he's part of it. I mean, see what yeah. I mean? It was just, yeah, there's something weird because if you, it just, I'm, it, it, I'm yeah. with you. It's just weird. It's one weird or the language. other. I, I would think the brother, I mean, if the brother probably knows more. So I hope to God they are sitting there and grilling him and questioning him and trying to find out anything that they can because I would think that that will help lead this investigation either away from the brother uh, or towards uh, the brother. Uh, and if he has nothing to do with it, uh, you know, hopefully then it goes in another direction. I just find it very odd. Well, here's what he does has something to do with. He has more information that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. And this kind of goes to, I, I think, the bedrock of all these really incredibly complex cases. And that is, if you have law enforcement that's involved that you have some senior people that are just great interviewers. You just need a really good interviewer to be able to make those connections, to inspire someone to feel safe enough to share things that might not want to share with other people. Mm -hmm. And so I think it, 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 these things, if you have some really good interviewers in there, you can really learn a lot and move this needle forward um, in a direction that's going to solve these things for others and bring some justice and some peace of mind because yeah, this one's really strange boy. I had heard one interesting idea on this and, and it's from my fiance last night we were talking about this case and she always brings up perspectives that I don't think of, which is always interesting and good uh, is okay. What if the van that he got into, cause he never got back into his car to get his stuff. Did he buy a weapon? At that van, you know, maybe an unmarked weapon. I don't know if he had any weapons or had in his home, in his possession. But if he didn't want to be seen as committing suicide, maybe go and get uh, a weapon that's not yours uh, from some sort of dealer, gets it in the van, takes it out to uh, the the woods or the lake and and kills himself. Uh, the The one thing that kind of breaks that mold is he was found nowhere near where this aquatic center was. He's found in a different state. He was found in Arkansas, uh, which not that far truly by driving. Uh, but if you're walking it, that's quite a trek to end up in Beaver Lake from where he was found. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so convinced on the, uh, on the suicide aspect of this, no. the, the, the patterns I'm seeing of life from what we see, what we're because we we're getting a very small glimpse of these people's lives that we're that we have great conjecture on. Sure, um, I'm not seeing a lot that I'm that I'm thinking 
we got suicide. I'm not ruling it out. It's an interesting theory. And again, I wouldn't rule it out, but at the same time though, eh, um, yeah. why, you know, like what would, what would be the reason, um, unless there's hidden pain there. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. I mean, suicides are caused by people that have a lot of pain and trauma and unresolved things going in the chemical imbalances of the brain nine times out of 10, but we're not seeing that being manifested in other areas. Mm-hmm. Um, but he had, secret place going that we don't know a lot about so that might be a part of his brain that's a little broken in that aspect too maybe that's what i'm wondering about with the secret life is you know where things just kind of catching up with him where his uh, responsibility is getting to be too much where he, he took on the nineteen thousand uh, dollars he's having another baby uh was there some sort of a break there where maybe he couldn't keep up with his obligations and it was just too much and he only knew it on the inside but was too proud to tell anybody and then went down that road. I don't know. I mean, it's just yeah, any I, anything's I, possible, but you're right. It's not following the narrative. Yeah, he's striking me still as a problem solver, not a yeah. not a give up wound collector kind of guy. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, he, he definitely doesn't, <laughs> it's not the same kind of person as Alec Murdoch was. No. Um, because, but I always look back to him. That guy had everything going sideways in his life. He He kills his wife. He kills his son. He's getting indicted for millions in fraud as, as a lawyer. If anyone was a, a candidate to bump themselves off, that guy was it. Sure. Um, so, no, nah, I, I, this this doctor seemed like more of a problem solver and mo- someone who moves forward rather than someone who's kind of dwelling on on things. I, that's why it's not quite again. But I'm not an expert in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just not. I'm not seeing a pattern there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm seeing a pattern of, of nefarious things that were going on that he probably lost control of. This is the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.